everyone, welcome back. By everyone, I mean the four people who watched my video in the first 20 minutes. That was a surprise and a half. Thank you, and hello. I hope you enjoy my content and that's why you watched it. If not, then hi anyway. Everyone's welcome. All the quirky and weird people. So, in this video I'm designing a character called Amaya. And she has a kind of Mother Earth persona. As you'll see later on, her hair is made of the galaxy. And that's why her eyes are like they are. Amaya has an interesting story. She was born atop Mount Olympus with the rest of the Greek gods. Born by Persephone and Apollo. However, she was thrown down Mount Olympus, much as Hephaestus was, and left to fend for herself. However, what the Greek gods and goddesses of Olympus did not know was that Amaya had special powers. And these powers consisted of death and life, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe write in the comments what powers you think Amaya has. Here I'm adding the shading into her hair, just adding some black, because as I said it's a galaxy, so in the deepest, darkest parts of it, it will be black as night, or even darker, almost a void. From afar, this drawing might look chaotic, but as you get closer you'll see that it's all just details. Lots and lots and lots of details. The fine liner and designing of this drawing itself, before even starting the colouring, alone took me 15-20 minutes and the entire marker process took me about half an hour. It's the biggest piece of marker art that I have tried to create so far. Here I'm going in, sort of blending the black into this deeper blue. This will be the empty space in between the slices of galaxy that I will later on add. Most of these clips I've had to speed up because otherwise the video would be extremely long because I have half an hour worth of footage, possibly more, just from all the little clips that I've added. Here you can see me adding in a lighter blue. This is what I was talking about with those slices of galaxy, where the galaxy in her hair seems to have been cut with a knife revealing layers of colour beneath. In her hair, you can see stars. Two types of stars, in fact. You've got the normal cartoonish stars and the more realistic stars representing the North Star. In this drawing, I added seven or so of these blue streaks representing the cuts through the galaxy trying to fill her hair up as much as possible. As I'm sure you can tell, almost the entire page is her hair. And in my head, if she was a full character, I would present her as having hair all the way down to the floor, possibly even longer, dragging out behind her. But her hair never gets dirty. Instead, it just flows like night. It's magical. Here I'm adding pink either side of the blue streaks, as I'm sure you can tell. And this is to stop building up the colour and the layers of interest in the drawing. Later on I'll add more, more, more layers of different types of pinks and then purple and then blue and then... <laughs> as I said, a second type of pink, a darker version. And you'll see in a second, an even darker version of pink. This one almost a 
pinky red with a touch of purple in it. And in this next clip, you'll see where I started adding purple and then eventually colouring in almost the entire page with blue. And here it is. This process itself took me a long time. And here's a planet, Earth, which I thought I would hone in on, seeing as that's where we are now. I used a dark green because I thought it would be a nice contrast to the lighter blue that I used. And I used the same blue that I used in the planet as the one that I used in the clips. These are all the planets throughout her hair, dotted around. It's a planet with two rings, because that makes sense. Here I'm adding lots of details with a sparkly silver gel pen kind of thing. And this is where I start the skin. This was terrifying, I'm not going to lie. After spending, I'd say 20 or so minutes on the hair, I was extremely concerned that I would just ruin this drawing by trying to use a skin tone that I don't often use. This piece in itself is probably only my seventh piece using these markers or any markers. I used to just stick to pencil and watercolour. And most of the time I draw people with lighter skin tones. This is only the second time I've tried to draw someone with a lighter skin tone. So as you can see, slightly terrifying. Here I'm just adding the darker brown which I'll be using for the shading and the shadows and the darker parts of where the skin is overlapping her skin and that kind of thing. And next I'll be adding an almost olive light tanned colour and this is where I got scared because trying to keep the colour smooth without it getting darker and darker and darker with more and more layers that you add on is more difficult than you would expect. And poor Amaya here was terrified as well as I was trying to make her skin tone act how I wanted it to look and be how I wanted it to present itself. Trying to blend this darker brown into this much, much lighter brown was an interesting process. It included lots of layers, lots of going over and over and over the same areas, lots of patience and blending, lots of chaos. But when you're doing art, you have to embrace the chaos. I wonder, can I get one comment that says embrace the chaos? That would mean the world. And if, as a new YouTuber, you think I'm doing the right thing and you think that my content is interesting, I would really appreciate it if you like this video. Just so I get the idea that someone out there is actually interested in what I'm doing. Here I'm adding an even lighter version of this light brown I'm using for her skin to kind of highlight her cheeks a little bit as if the sun is shining on them even though she is the galaxy and the night. It makes no sense but I guess that's what makes it even more chaotic. Trying to blend the cheeks into the rest of her skin tone was extremely difficult because the more and more layers I added the darker and darker it got which was interesting process to say the least on her forehead you could see where I added the lighter as well however I ended up going back over that with the darker part of her skin tone because I didn't like how the colours were turning out. Here I'm just darkening the shadows and going in with the other cheek, which I'm now realising is completely off frame, but I'm getting a tripod and then my camera angles will be better, I promise.
as you can see here, I'm just starting to finish off the skin, trying to layer it all and make it so that all of the skin matches up and is the same darkness and tone, which was difficult to say the least. It was an interesting process and I will never forget the new techniques that I've learned and the skill set that I have developed just from this. On the neck it was much easier because I could just go one side and then go the other side creating a very even tone but I couldn't do this on the face because of her eyes and her lips and her cheeks however I tried to do it on her chin because I realized that it was a good way to get an even color and it kind of worked which was good because it made life easier next I'm going in to sort of darken around the lip area before I add in some pink to kind of give it a more subtle entrance into the pink rather than a very harsh line between the pink of the lips and her skin and then I go through and I add some freckles I know I did them in fine liner but enhancing them with a pen is always nice because imperfections aren't really imperfections in fact they're what makes you perfect I have no idea what I was doing here. I'm completely off frame and I apologize for that. Hopefully when I have my tripod, I'll be a little bit better at keeping in frame. Here I'm adding the pink to the lips and you can see at the top of in between her eyebrows and above her nose where it's slightly darker. That's where I went over the highlighted area that I didn't like. Here I'm adding a darker pink realizing that I completely ignored my earlier plan for ignoring that harsh line and going over the edge to kind of blend that pink into her skin tone a bit more. Then I enhanced some of the shadows a little bit more because I wasn't liking how light they were. And here I go in and I start using a gray pen to add the shadows in her eyes. This is something that I will often see people ignoring when they're drawing, which I think is sad because it adds more and more depth to your drawing and more detail and interest. I'm adding more shadow to the teeth so that they don't look as bright white. And then I went through and drew shadows on every single star in this piece. Every single one. That was a time consuming piece of detail that I did not need to do and yet I did it anyway. You can ignore how I'm holding my pen extremely strangely, it's because I'm trying to work around my camera and it's interesting. Some of the angles that I have to put my hand up are a cause for cramps. <laughs> Here I come back with a purple and eventually pink pen to colour in her plaster because I felt like it and I thought it matched her design perfectly. And I didn't think that Amaya would just want a boring old plaster, instead I thought that she would want something funky and crazy to match her bubbly and adventurous personality. Amaya would be the risk-taking adventurous one of a friendship group and here she is i hope you like her and i hope you like this video bye this is jd signing out don't forget to leave your embrace the chaos comment down below